My name is Jared Poland, and I'm a photographer. And I've been capturing amazing stories, one frame at a time, since I was 13 years old. And now I share my stories and my experience with the world. So join me as I travel the globe in search of incredible people, fantastic places, and wonderful adventures, one frame at a time. This is Frono's Photo. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com here in Flagstaff, Arizona, because we are about to embark on an amazing adventure onto the edge of the Grand Canyon. Now, I have never camped before, but that's why we have our chaperones from Adventure Driven to make sure that everything is okay. And while we're here, I want to capture some amazing photos because what is an adventure if you can't share the photos with everybody? So now, let's get off to the canyon. So it seems like when people go on vacation that they're really quick to just take snapshots. Now I think it's really important that you observe the world first to experience what's going on around you before you try to capture the moment. So, welcome to the Grand Canyon. Uh, this hole? This hole right over here is part of it. So I'm used to driving in the city and seeing holes like this. This is just another hole in the ground. We just want to talk about some quick safety stuff. I'm Ross, and I guess you could say I'm the heavy for adventure driven. Uh, no throwing rocks in the canyon. I know it's a temptation. It just seems like you've got a big hole in the ground, you've got a lot of rocks on the ground. It feels like the time that you should maybe just throw some rocks into the canyon. Jared! Get! If I catch him trying to throw one more rock, I'm gonna cut his fro off. Um, Basically everything's gonna try to hurt me out here. Pretty much, it's Arizona. If it doesn't wanna eat you, it wants to, yeah, make you shrivel up and blow away. Um, but water is key, gotta drink lots of water here, try to keep yourselves covered from the sun. I'm three bottles in. Okay, good. At good. least I've peed three times on the way out here. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I'm not allowed to pee in the canyon? Is that even worse than throwing rocks? <laughs> it's just because this area is so sensitive, we take with us everything we brought in. So we just want to be cognizant that this is a sacred place and we try to treat it as such. We, there are very few people that get to come out here. It's a privilege that we're all out here. Really, most of it's common sense. Don't fall into the canyon. If you need to run, run that way. Well, it's not a felony if you fall in. Yeah, see, why wouldn't it be a felony if I fell in? And we just have to call the Boy Scouts and they go get you, so. Sounds good, thank you for having me here yeah, at the Grand Canyon. Sure. Now let's, uh, let's go set up some camp. Sounds yeah. great. But let's go this way, not the other way. <laughs> I'm Seth Jacobson, I own Adventure Driven. You know, we were wondering about what in the world, Jared, how he is gonna take all this in. We know he's from the city. We know he's not done this before. So I, I've never been camping before and they've asked me to help them put up the tents and honestly, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was to set up the tents. I came by every once in a while and, and, and hammered some nails into the ground and pulled some rope. My pants are dirty. Not quite sure what to expect. I know that he never really spent more than 10 minutes outside. You know, we're on the fence. It could go either way. You fly. So we, we know there's gonna be some challenges. <laughs> but with the scenery we have to show him, I know he's gonna come home with some great photos. Base camp is set up. Why don't I give you a tour around where we're living? So follow me. We're gonna start off over here. This is what we call the media tent, media central base camp for all of our stuff. But this is where we're storing everything 
that we brought with us to the Grand Canyon. This one is kind of like the kitchen. This is where the ladies are cooking all the food. They're prepping for dinner. We're having fajitas tonight. We've got trash and recycling. There is nothing left behind here. You can't even throw your apples. Well, maybe the cows will eat them if they let me throw them. Up top, maybe you can see that. You've got my tent. That's where I'm sleeping. Yep, it's really cool. It's a queen mattress. And you know what? If you open the roof, you got a zipper. I can see the stars at night. Not a lot of magic happens up there, just some sleep. This is Lexi. Hooked up to Lexi right here is one of those newfangled solar panels. Oh, somebody's getting out of the shower. Who's in the shower? Oh, look, you have a nice floor mat. You can stand here. Oh, this is good. I'm going to try that. How was it? Good? Oh, it was wonderful. Right over here, we have the tents where some of the other crew guys are sleeping. All of the ones that snore are over here. And then you have, this is Rosie, the FJ Cruiser. You have another camper up top. You get to sleep up there. Really awesome tents, great accommodations. Spin around over there real quick. You see that tent over there? All right, Candy, what do we have over here? The dark room? Oh, well, I suppose you could call it that, but uh, this is where you're going to go to the bathroom. That, that, looks, that looks like a nice little potty in there. Yeah. So how, how does this thing work? What do we do? Well, we've got a little bag. This is called a wag bag. It's called wag bag, waste kit. Yeah, if you want to do it, I'll walk you through right, it. Walk me through this. Uh, rip open the bag. Ugh. <laughs> I'm getting into We're the... hanging out in the potty. All right, I got it open. So you've got a little thing of TP, not quite enough. What the, what are you gonna wipe with this? <laughs> what, what is this enough to wipe your tears away? Pretty much, uh, but we have extra TP here. Oh my God, and it's double ply TP. And on the other side, we have some wet wipes in case it gets messy. Do not leave home without wet wipes. Wet wipes are like the best invention since sliced bread. The, oh my God, there's a handy wipe. You get a handy wipe. Now, what is the handy wipe for? Well, it's for after you use that tiny little piece of toilet paper. But, all right, so show me how this thing works. All right, you'll raise the lid. Now, do you still need to raise the lid when you're a male? Or yes. do, is it all squatting no. all the time? <laughs> Because I think I might have trouble standing because the thing is so short to the ground, I may miss. I know, I know. You, you may want to just relax and take in the view. That's, that is true. We do have a beautiful view while we're sitting on the toilet. All right, so there is some uh, powder in here that turns liquids into solids. Powder turns liquids into solids. Yes, so it doesn't get messy. Okay. So you just open this up and uh, make sure you spread it out good. What, what, do you, what do you have, an elephant? That is a big bag. So we're good? Yeah. What's next? Once you go, let's just pretend you've gone. Okay, we've gone. You will uh, take care of cleaning yourself and take this. Try to get uh, all the air out of it. This is a good time not to breathe. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't breathe. Don't breathe. So you squish all the air out. Oh, it looks good. And then you Loops, do, loop. do a few things and then, then you tie, tie it, it in a knot. And then where's it go? And then place all your stuff in there. And then that's the story. And this is what you're left with. It says, caution, waste disposal bag, dispose in landfill or refuse container only. Candy, thank you for showing me this, but now I, I think I need to use it. All right, I'd All be right. happy to evacuate. All right, you evacuate, then I evacuate. All right, thank you, Candy. Ooh, I can see the moon. So I hope you're enjoying this episode. If you are, please leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, but also don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes go live. Now, let's get back to the show. Jet! So one of the things I've been most looking forward to has been the sunrise photos, because I don't know what to expect, and I'm gonna head out with Ross. We're gonna hike a little bit to get to a really cool secluded area. Looking forward to taking Jared out the crack of dawn and, and showing him how amazing this place is as the sun creeps up, and hoping the two of us can get some photos to, that are worth sharing with people. It's currently 5.18 a.m and we're out here at the Grand Canyon. It's now sunrise officially, and Ross has already started to shoot some down there, and you can see what's happening out over the canyon. As the sun comes up, you can see the light lighting up the canyon in the background. So I can only imagine for the next couple hours, the light as it gets higher and higher and higher is just gonna fill in different parts of the canyon, bringing out some amazing light, and that is what we're here to capture. So I'm gonna go join Ross over here at the edge and just try to get some really cool shots. Ross, how you making out over here so far? 
Doing all right. This is crazy. Just even the, the, the couple of seconds to walk over here, noticing how the light has, it just keeps changing. It's spectacular here. I mean, it's not so much changing as it's just, as I look down over a sheer cliff of 3,000 feet, this is insane. <laughs> Let's just take a second to just soak it in first because because it's it's beautiful. It's pretty gorgeous. I mean, even what the water's doing, you know, and it, we just had rain recently, so the water's been muddy, but this morning, I mean, it just picks up the red reflections and it's breathtaking. What, what are you looking for here with your wide? I want to see, you know, the sheer cliff, uh, trying to keep our camp out and just see the horseshoe and, and again, pick up some of the color off the water. No, it's beautiful. I mean, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this wider 14 because that's my wider on the Nikon. Uh, yeah, yeah and are. then I'm going to switch <laughs> over to the other body, the, that Canon 5 DSR, mm -hmm. to go with the 24 to 70 and maybe a 70 to 200 just to try some things different. But I mean, I, let's just let's just see what we've got here. Right. The only thing that'd make it better, a couple of puffy clouds out there for us. That's right, we don't have many clouds right now. I don't know that it was the best light. Uh, we didn't have clouds in the sky, so it kind of threw me off a little bit, but that's landscape photography. You don't control the weather. And hearing the water, you can hear the rapids right now. I can think of worse ways to start the day. It's like you can almost tell time with the way that the sun is moving. It's a pretty surreal place. This is, this is just, it's beautiful. So I know I said that this is kind of like a big hole in the ground, but honestly, when I picked up the camera and I started to look through it and capture the world that is right in front of me, it really came to life for me. I mean, that's my personal thing, is when I put a camera in my hands, even if I'm not shooting, just observing the world, thinking about photography, that just makes everything much more real to me. Yeah, and, 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 and my thing with shooting, it's like I come out here and we have the, we have the 14 millimeter, we have ultra wide, but you also, also have to think of the mediums and the tight and the details because there's so many different things to get photos of out here, not just the canyon. Well, and for me, like these little outcroppings and stuff with a long lens. Oh, you know, yeah. because the light starts kissing that. Well, I, I didn't even see it, so that would be perfect for a longer lens because you have that sticking out and that sticking out and that sticking out and you just get the layers and you compress them and you're going to get some really nice things. And, and then you look over that direction and it looks like a putting green. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's one thing to look at it on the back of the camera, but it's another thing to just sit out on a rock on the ledge of the Grand Canyon and just think about what I'm looking at. It is so hard to understand the size, the sheer volume at which it is. It's so hard to fathom, but when you sit there and you see it from different perspectives, you get a different angle. You see the light hit the walls different and the shadows start to appear and you see the clouds create shadows. You just sit there and you go, wow, I kind of have to wait for the sun to come up a little more because it's just peeking over the edge of the canyon now. It's kind of interesting because you, you can't exactly get the canyon lit because maybe we shoot later in the day, even though it's harsher sun, it could still work out. And, and if you're shooting black and white? I didn't even think about it. This is the time. I do a lot of black and white and I didn't even, I wasn't even comprehending what that would look like. Oh man, this in black and white or like this wall we're shooting and you know, you lose the color. It's like, all right, I don't need it. Oh, you could sit here for weeks. So what's really cool is even though it's only 5.48 in the morning, it doesn't feel like that at all. The rush of, of experiencing the world where we're at right now is amazing. I just, I just feel awake, I feel alive, and this is, it's, just, it's just amazing to be out here shooting right now. I think I just sat on a cactus. So I think Jared and I both had a good time. I'd like to think that I helped Jared open his eyes to landscape and walked away from it, seeing a little more of what we see, that it's not just the uh, destination, but the adventure. I'm glad we got up extra early because now it feels like we've done something with our day. Absolutely. So we're camping out here on Navajo land, and I honestly don't know too much about the culture, but Seth has been telling me that we're gonna go on a couple of excursions for me to get some of the history to learn more, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We have something very special for Jared. We're gonna take him to some Hogans, which are Navajo homesteads that are centuries old. I have a gut feeling that he's really gonna dig it because of all the culture, all the history, and hoping he gets some really good photos he can take back with him. All right, Seth, so what, what is this? This is pretty cool. This is a Navajo homestead. So they lived here for centuries in this area. Actually, that was the first homestead there that you're seeing. They basically wore that building structure out. They built a newer one here, and a family uh, lived here. They had their water source here. They had their food source here. That's where they kept their uh, sheep in that corral, and each person had their 
tasks throughout the day out here living off the land. And you're saying this is this could be a couple hundred years old? Oh, centuries old, okay. for sure. And do you know how many people would be in a family unit? You know, there could be four, six, or more. It doesn't seem that large. Can we take a look inside and see what it's like? Yeah, we sure could. I think you really dig it. Yeah, maybe we can get some good shots in there. Yeah, yeah check this out, Jared. This is so cool. Wow. Pretty small. So you're saying the whole family unit just lived right here? They sure did. It didn't look like this when they actually lived here. They would have um, the Navajo rugs they'd weave from these sheep out here. And more likely they had things in here to put their you know, daily needs on and that kind of thing. Sure. It stayed cool. You notice the temperature difference when you walk in here? Yeah, it's pretty amazing because it, it's really hot outside and, it's, and I guess it's from the mud and the packing of the timbers and everything yeah. in here. Yeah, and the way they ventilate it for, they would cook here and the smoke would go out the top. Yeah, you noticed that a hogan when we pulled in that stone one out there? Yeah. Well, when a Native American would die in one of those hogans, then they, the rest of the family wouldn't live in it. And so uh, that's why that one more than likely is there, and they built a new one here. So we just stopped to see a hogan. I've never even heard of a hogan before, but seeing, you know, how it's lasted for centuries and how well they've been made, I had to capture some photos. Seeing how small it is, but thinking to how many families have lived there across the generations, it, wow, it's just, it's just a wow. I just wanted to showcase the blue sky with the clouds and the Hogan in the foreground, and honestly, that was just mind-blowing. All right, you get some good stuff? I think I did, how about you? Yeah, some really cool stuff. No, I, I, I really appreciate you bringing me out here because first off, it's sacred ground. It's great that the Navajo let us be out here. Uh, and second, it's just centuries old, houses yeah. like this, just trying to put myself into their shoes is, is pretty difficult because it's just the daily grind of living. So uh, I think I got some good stuff. Good. You ready for some more adventure? Absolutely. Let's do it. Hey guys, don't forget for behind the scenes exclusive video as well as all of the photos that I took, please go ahead and check out fronosphoto.com slash show. All right, here we are in Tuba City, Arizona, where we're about to check out a flea market with some traditional Navajo food and arts and crafts. Let's go see what we can find. So while we were walking around the flea market, we ran into a wonderful woman named Alvina, and she has a restaurant there that she's been cooking up great traditional food for the last, it looks like 30 years. What are the traditional dishes that you offer? Steamed corn stew. Mm. That's uh, corn with mutton. Very nice. And then we have a Navajo taco, fried bread with beans, lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, and onions. Mm. You know, I try to make my food real colorful, so I have food that Navajo uh, prepared long, long time ago. So it's very traditional. Mm -hmm. Traditional food. Oh yeah, here we go. This way, I like the light on it this way. This is, this is good lighting. Oh, people that see this are going to want to eat this. I'm just getting on a lower angle so I don't get anybody in the background, and it makes it so much better. Get all those colors in there, because she talked about colors. And there you go, boom. You have your colors. You mentioned the, the traditional type of food. Being that I'm a photographer, we hear a lot about the traditional Navajo may not like having their photos taken. And I know you were talking about that a little earlier. Can you give us a little more insight into maybe why that was the way? I think it's, they have different beliefs. Like somebody took a picture of you and went somewhere, they take in your, your soul or part right. of you somewhere. And so you don't mind it yourself. I mean, you may not like it, but you, I'm sure you look great in photographs. Yeah, I, I used to, you know, never like my picture taken. But I come to know and I, I learned that God created me in, in a special way. And I learned to appreciate myself. So you know that all this food's really good. This is kind of one of those places where you may not want to take out your big camera. So maybe in this case, you want to share this great food take one of those Instagram photos, snap a couple of little uh, smartphone shots, share it out with the world, tell people where you got it. This gives them an opportunity to see that and then go ahead and try it out. 
So while we were eating some of Alvina's food, I overheard her talking to her family about what it was like to live in a Hogan. I, I had to know more. So we, we saw a Hogan the other day, and yeah. <laughs> I was fascinated, one, with how many people live there and, and what, what was it like to live in one? In, in our family, there was seven of us, and we all stay in that little Hogan. Wow. We would lay side by side at night and you just use the, the sheepskin that you dry that and you use it as a cushion mm -hmm. on the ground in the hogan. So every morning when you get up, you, you take your sheepskin out and hang it out outside. We all slept together. We all ate out of one bowl. And I believe it's, it's, it's like a communion. You learn to share. And I believe spiritually that's what keeps you together. So what really struck me as interesting was when, when she was talking about the family unit and all staying in that small Hogan, it kind of reminded me of what I've been doing for the past couple of days on this adventure. All right, guys, that flea market was pretty cool. We got to see some nice arts and crafts and eat some really awesome food. But I have to tell you, the best part about it was Alvina. Hearing her stories, really put everything together and made it all worthwhile. So tonight I'm going out underneath the stars to try to capture the amazing space that is above us. I don't really know what to expect because being from the city, we don't get to see the stars that are up in the sky that I'm supposed to see. I'm looking forward to getting out there and just capturing the billions and billions of stars. You know, Jared's already been inspired by the Grand Canyon, but the thing is, is that tonight it's gonna blow his mind because the stars are so spectacular out here. There is no light pollution whatsoever. So we're gonna get some amazing night shots. So this is gonna be great experiencing this with him. Here we are at the Grand Canyon late at night, and you have to remember that the Grand Canyon is more than just a hole in the ground, because you gotta look up. You got the sky, you have the stars. Is that correct, Dave? That's right, man. Dave, how amazing is it just to look up and see how clear it is? It's truly awe-inspiring, Jared, definitely. Yeah, and, and, and I wanna give you guys some tips for how I'm going to shoot and how Dave's going to try and shoot to get those awesome shots. So, so one of the things, Dave, you know, obviously a tripod, Absolutely. A tripod's gonna be necessary because you know, you're shooting at long shutter speeds. That, that's the point out here. What's a good shutter speed to, to start at? Shutter sure speed between 15, 20 seconds tops. Right, and what's gonna happen if you go over 20 seconds? You're gonna end up getting some motion blur because the stars are moving. Is it the stars? Yeah, no, wait. The we're Earth moving. is moving. We're, yeah, we're moving. We're, yeah. moving <laughs> we're moving around the stars and the yes. stars are, yeah, yeah, we gotta remember that yes. one. Well, let's talk about uh, lens choice. Wider is better. In this case, the widest lens that you have is gonna give you the ability to capture light and stars from the largest area. You're gonna pick up most of the sky and then you wanna be at the widest aperture. Is it 2.8, is it 1.4, is it 4.5, 3.5, whatever it is, get wide open. But also, a cable release is totally gonna to help. If you don't have a cable release, set the timer on the camera so that the camera has time to settle. Now, one of the things that I find to be the hardest is where to focus. It's pitch black. Some people may say infinity and beyond, but you kind of don't want to go beyond infinity. You want to go to infinity and maybe pull back just slightly. What other focusing tips do you have? Uh, I'd say pick the brightest star in the sky that you can and um, just try to focus on that. Stick with spot focusing. It's just going to help you out quite a bit. Right, and, and manual. You're not going to get autofocus to work out here. And other than that, I think we should just, you know, kill the lights and go to town and just start shooting. Let's have some fun. Not bad, Dave, what do you think? I think you did a great job, Jaren. It's good focus, looks sharp. Those stars made it all worthwhile. And when I was taking those photos and I would point up, I was like, is that a cloud? No, no, those are nebula. That's clusters of billions and billions of stars. It's just insane. I'm super happy with the results. A lot of it is just pointing the camera at the sky and hoping and seeing what you get. Well, sometimes you can end up recomposing. You'll see a part of the sky that you really like and you compose on that section the way you like it, rule of thirds, whatever you decide to use and then go for it. What amazes me about this is that when I look up, I don't see as many stars that I'm capturing. It, it is unbelievable to see at that 20 second exposure how many more stars there are in the sky. I love that Jared is out here because 
he's always inspired me over the years as a photographer, and now I get to share my inspiration with him so he can continue to inspire others. To wrap this up, Dave, thank you for staying out here with me because it's, it's, more, it's more fun to shoot with a friend. Absolutely. You know, but like I said earlier, no matter what DSLR you have, take those simple tips that I said and go out there and try this because you never know what you're gonna capture. And that's where we'll leave it, Dave. Thanks for hanging out with me. My pleasure, Jared. Great job. Great time. As I look back on this journey to the Grand Canyon, I have to say it is a lot more than the hole in the ground that I first thought that it was. It has natural beauty that lends well to capturing some amazing photos. Whether it's at sunrise or just hanging out throughout the day, I got some awesome stuff. And then waking up at three in the morning for an opportunity to shoot the clearest skies I have ever seen and share it with everybody is absolutely amazing. But beyond that, being on Navajo land, it's sacred. Seeing Hogans, meeting the people that lived in actual Hogans and eating their food gives you an experience that you really can't find anywhere else. But if it tells me one thing, it tells me that you have to get out there and experience this world. No matter where you go, whether it's to Grand Canyon or somewhere else, be sure to take the camera, capture your experience, share it with the world, but better yet, just enjoy and love every day that you have. And I cannot wait to see where I end up next. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. So if you enjoy photography and you'd like to capture images similar to what I did in this episode, well check out the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto over at fronosphoto.com guide.